don't stop speaking out. And for people who say, well, this is way over there. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. Our police get trained by the IDF and our ID in the IDF actually uses those tactics on the Palestinian people. Our federal dollars go over to Israel to do what they're doing to the Palestinian people. And when they do it to them, they're going to do it to us. If you guys have not seen or heard about this story already, this is important. And it's important to get the narrative that is outside of the corporate media narrative. Let me share this. And I want to give a shout out to Colin from the Indie News Network for sharing his photo like this. This is Aaron Bushnell. Aaron Bushnell was a 25 year old Air Force officer, the United States Air Force officer. He was a staunch supporter of Palestinian liberation, so much so that he died for them to show his solidarity for them. This is a tough story to tell because the plight of the Palestinians is linked to the plight of many other people around the world, just like the Congolese. I was going to share the beginning parts of this video, but because of some channels getting flagged, I will have to talk about it instead of sharing. I wasn't going to share the part where he does emulate, but I was going to share some of what he said. So I will say that much. So trigger warning to anybody who is watching, if you are sensitive to these topics, I fully understand you not listening any further. And thank you so much. Uh, but this is a tough subject. So One of the friends of Aaron Bushnell said, Aaron is one of the kindest, gentlest, silliest little kid in the Air Force. There is a video that shares it. And when he self emulates, he, it, the video, that part is blurred, just to let you all know but I just wanted to share that part. Um, he is in his military fatigues and he walks to the Israeli embassy in Washington, DC. As he's walking, he says that he will no longer be complicit in the genocide, in the genocide he's talking about with the Palestinians. And as he is walking, he stops in front of the embassy. He's carrying a metal container, which has lighter fluid. And he proceeds to ignite his body after dousing himself with the lighter fluid. As he does so, he starts screaming, free Palestine. Those would be his last words that he ever says. And just to humanize him because there are people who are dehumanizing him. Quote, he is one of the most principled comrades I have ever known. That's from Xylem, 
who work with Bushnell to support San Antonio's unhoused residents. Quote, he's always trying to think about how we can actually achieve liberation for all with a smile on his face. So this is him singing karaoke. This is him, looks like an orange shirt, one of my favorite colors, looks good on him. So with that being said, unfortunately, what has transpired as he was burning from the self-immolation was that the police who were there pointed their guns at him and told him to get down on the ground. I want you to think about how stereotypically that American that is, that instead of helping him to try to take out the fire, they point their guns at him. One of the officers said, I don't need more guns, I need more fire extinguishers. As he's screaming, free Palestine. Now, as his uh, actions have shed more light on what Palestinians are going through, the corporate media has downplayed his actions and they covered it up. And then now they're trying to paint a different narrative. So we're going to go to that. Because that's what corporate media does. So let's go there. Of course, Andrea Mitchell. Side note, she's the wife of the former chair, chairman of the Federal Reserve, Alan Greenspan. So, Mrs. Greenspan. Let's take a look. We have an update now on a truly tragic incident in Washington, D.C. Yesterday, 25-year-old Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, Texas, the active duty airman in the U.S. Air Force who set himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in an apparent protest against the Israel-Hamas war has died. That identification made by Metropolitan Police here. Bushnell filmed his own self-immolation on his cell phone, yelling, free Palestine, before collapsing to the ground outside the embassy. He was rushed to the hospital for treatment, but later succumbed to his injuries. And if you or someone you know is in crisis, call or text 988 to reach the Suicide Aid and Crisis Lifeline. You can also call 1-800-277. They're trying to paint this as a mental health issue. That's what they're painting it as. That's what the mainstream is trying to narrate it as. Here's more further proof. Let me share this out of the New York Times. Headline says, man dies after setting himself on fire outside Israeli embassy in Washington, Air Force says. Now, you tell me something. A lot of times what they'll do is that they know that people will just read the headlines and then move on. They won't really dig deeply and then they'll also try to paint a different narrative that is more in line with the State Department or the Western, Western hegemonic narrative. And so there, it's just like, oh my God, some crazy guy decided to set himself on fire. And if you decide to read just a little bit further, it says Aaron Bushnell, an active duty senior airman, repeatedly shouted free Palestine as he filmed and live streamed his protest against Israel's deadly military actions in Gaza. He had been taken to a hospital Sunday with life-threatening injuries. But let's get into the article just a little bit. 
talks about the details. Of course, he self-immolated outside. Uh, it says Metropolitan Police Department in Washington identified him as Aaron Bushnell, 25, San Antonio. Uh, he was an active duty airman, says Bushnell, appeared to have filmed the protest on Sunday, live stream it to social media platform on Twitch. New York Times could not confirm who was behind the account that posted the video, so they removed it. But the footage matched the details in the incident released by police. Says he was dressed in fatigues, identified himself in the video as Mr. Bushnell, and calls himself an active duty Air Force officer. So they said his LinkedIn profile, who matched him, says he's an aspiring software engineer and active duty airman for nearly four years. His quote, he says, I will no longer be complicit in genocide. He says, I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest, but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. That's the part where they do not want people to see, they do not want people to hear, because what's going on in Gaza right now is an extreme act of violence committed and funded by the United States and is committed by Israel. That's what's going on. This is what Aaron Bushnell protested against. Let's continue. Standing in front of the gates of the Israeli embassy in Washington, he sets his phone down to douse himself in a clear liquid from a metal bottle, then lights himself on fire while yelling free Palestine until he falls to the ground. Video shows law enforcement officers approaching him before he catches fire. One off camera saying, can I help you? Uh, officers with the U.S. Secret Service were at first respond. They were there. Uh, you see, no staff members at the Israeli, Israeli embassy were injured. It says more than 29,000 people have been killed in the war in Gaza. By the way, just to say, whenever anybody, all these outlets was called a war, a war denotes that you have two equal opposing sides. There aren't two equal opposing sides. This is a genocide. This is a massacre. That's what it is. And it has been that ever since it started back in 1947, 1948, in what they called the Nakba or the Great Tragedy. That is what it is. Don't let anybody tell you else otherwise. This is land theft, pure and simple. This is resource theft, pure and simple. And this is not anything against Jewish people because Judaism and Zionism are two different things. This is illegal occupation of a area where you have an indigenous population that are inhabiting the area. That's ultimately what it is. So that's what Aaron Bushnell was advocating for. He was advocating for the freedom and the self-determination of the Palestinian people within the region. And this includes Palestinian people who are Muslim, Jewish, Christian, atheist, whatever beliefs that they have. These are for the people in the region. So that's what he was advocating for. Now, it says, as international costs for ceasefire have grown and the humanitarian crisis in Gaza has deepened, the Israeli embassy has been the site of protests that have come the result of arrest, but seldom in violence. So here's the thing. It is an extreme act of political protest. What he did. I would share this tweet, but I can't because it shows the picture of Aaron Bushnell self-immolating, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Mossad, which is the intelligence arm of the Israeli government, they put out a tweet 
a Twitter statement with Aaron Bushnell on fire, and they captioned it as, quote, our enemies kill themselves, end quote. That tweet was then deleted, but screenshots are forever. Unfortunately, because of guidelines on the tube, I can't show the tweet, but that's what Mossad said. So it shows how heartless they really are, right? But I will show what resident Zionist Laura Loomer said. And this is the narrative that's being shared over and over to combat what Aaron Bushnell did, because this is a very strong statement. So Laura Loomer says, this is what mental illness looks like. Again, they're going with the mental illness route. She continues, says, it's sad to see people are celebrating what this man did when it clearly is severe mental illness. I don't care if he's a veteran, his behavior is unacceptable and dishonorable. There's no honor in supporting Islamic terrorists. Nobody ever said he was Islamic. Nobody ever said he was a Muslim. He never said he was a Muslim. Interesting how she she threads that needle. Let's continue. There's no honor in supporting. Okay, so she says, F him. She's talking about a service member. It's always, you know, it's funny about people like Laura Loomer. It's always support our troops until they say or do something that you disagree with. It's always support our troops, support our troops. Funny how that works, right? They don't actually care about the troops, by the way. She says he's a traitor to his country who lit himself on fire to support and he never said anything about Hamas, by the way. He said free Palestine. That's what he said. Why is she putting words in his mouth? She said Gaza is controlled by Hamas. That is a lie. Why is it a lie? Who controls the water? Who controls the food? Who controls the electricity? Who controls the, the fuel that goes in and out of Gaza? It's not the Palestinian resistance. Remember what the defense minister of Israel said back in October? He said, we're going to cut off the food, the water, the electricity, and the fuel. We're going to stop it. They, look. Palestinians can't even get chocolate. Is that Hamas? Is Hamas the reason why they can't get chocolate? You can't get a wedding dress into Israel, and sorry, into occupied Palestine. You can't get a wedding dress into the West Bank or into Gaza. You can't get oregano, oregano. Tell me again, who has control? Who has control of Gaza? It's not the Palestinian resistance, because if they actually had control of Gaza, would there be a need for resistance? Come on, Laura. He says we need to stop supporting people who whitewash Islamic terrorism. Let me ask you this. 
do an occupied people have the right to resist? Does an occupied people have the right to resist? Let's continue. If he wanted to end genocide, he should have asked Hamas to stop killing Jews. Let me ask you again. It is not Jews, it's Zionists, number one. Number two, if it's an illegal occupation, do the people who are occupied have a right to resist? She says there's no such thing as genocide in Gaza. Uh, 30,000 dead people would like a word. 30,000. 30,000. What is she talking about? She says the only people who have been genocided are Jews and Christians. Yes. There are, have been Jews and Christians that have been genocided since October 7th. They're Palestinian. Palestinian Jews and Christians have been massacred by Zionists. See, here's, here's the problem with somebody like Laura Loomer. Here, here, here's the problem. She doesn't even regard Palestinians as having any other beliefs besides Muslim. There are Christian Palestinians. One of the oldest churches in the world was bombed by Israel. Churches, churches, synagogues destroyed in Palestine. There are Jewish Palestinians and Christian Palestinians. Their blood is on the hands of Zionists. And it doesn't register to her that some of them, other Jews and Christians, are Palestinian? Her bigotry is showing. She is a bigot, deeply so. Let me share this as well. In fact, you know what? I'm not sharing another tweet from her. To hell with her. Because she is trying to paint this narrative that somebody like Aaron Bushnell is just some crazed individual, despite the, the mental clarity that he actually has into doing what he did. Here's some commentary from somebody who has a lot of very base takes. And I want to share what she said regarding this narrative of mental illness. And I want you guys to see what Imani says. So Imani says this. No, ra no rational human lights himself on fire. None. Of course they do. Of course they do. This has been a form of protest for centuries. What are you talking about? Furthermore, self-immolation is a form of communication in protest. And if you were really pressed about somebody going to that extreme action to protest and communicate... One would lead me to believe that you're really just as interested in making sure that politicians and people in power respond to somebody who would protest in that way. Or at the very least respond in such a way that would make such an action unnecessary, wouldn't you think? But you're not interested in any of that. You're not interested in what he self-immolated for. You generally don't give a fuck. Because the desire to declare him as mentally ill has nothing to do with him actually being mentally ill. But everything to do with removing him and isolating the movement that inspires him away from society, away from sane society. Anybody who thinks like this generally doesn't give a shit. Promise. No. So what I will say is the actions that he took were acts of desperation because of what is going on in Gaza. 
is an act of desperation to put and shine as bright of a light on the plight of a people. That is what his actions were. Because he saw it so clearly that he chose to do what he did. That's what he did. And it's not the world that is sick. It is the people that put themselves above us that are sick. His conviction and mental clarity was clearly present and he did not harm others to make the statement. Now, I'm not encouraging people to do the same. I think it is important to explain why he took such drastic actions. We are now approaching 30,000 people that are being massacred in Gaza with our federal dollars being used to commit this genocide. This is being done in our name. So, let me share this as well. And if you guys have not, uh, I will clarify in the poll. But I think this poll is very important as well. But let me share this with you guys too. Because the narrative, they will keep it, uh, you know, in, in line with the State Department, in line with the Western hegemonic, he, hegemonic powers. Quote, this is what our ruling class has decided will be normal, end quote. That's from Aaron Bushnell. These are the headlines. Said, shout out to Fifty Shades Away. He says, this, this headline says, war and illness could fill, kill 85,000 Gazans in six months. Even under the most optimistic scenario, an immediate ceasefire, an additional 6,500 Gazans can perish, scientists estimated. Next one. In a likely illegal attack, Israeli Navy fired on UN food convoy in Gaza. Quote, Gaza has become very fast one of the most dangerous places to be an aid worker in, end quote, says one UNRWA official said. Next one. $14 billion U.S. aid package for Israel crafted with eye to multi-front war, not just Gaza. This one says, U.S. House panel recommends $17.6 billion in military aid for Israel. That's what's going on. This is why Aaron Bushnell felt as strongly as he did. And I think we need to see his reasons for why he felt so strongly. Now, there was a statement that was made by Palestinian resistance. They heard about what Aaron Bushnell did and they made a statement. And I will be reading that to you right now. And here's what they say. It says, we in the Islamic resistance movement express our deepest condolences and our full solidarity with the family and friends of the American pilot, Aaron Bushnell, whose names have been immortalized as a defender of human values and the oppression of the Palestinian people who are suffering because of the American administration and his unjust policies, as well as the American activist, Rachel Corey, who was crushed by a Zionist bulldozer in Rafah in 2003. It is the same city that Bushnell paid with his life for putting pressure on his country's government to prevent the criminal Zionist army from attacking it and committing massacres and violations there. The administration of U.S. President Biden bears full responsibility for the death of U.S. Army pilot Aaron Bushnell due to its policy that supported the, national, the Nazi Zionist entity in its war of extermination against our Palestinian people as he's given his life in order to shed light on the Zionist massacres and ethnic cleansing against our people in the Gaza Strip. 
Uh, the heroic pilot, Eric Bushnell, will remain immortal in the memory of the Palestinian people and the free people of the world and a symbol of spirit of global human solidarity with our people and their just cause. The tragic accident that cost pilot Bushnell his life and an expression of the growing state of anger among the American people who reject their country's policy that contributes to the killing and extermination of our people and to reject their government's violation of universal human values by providing cover to ensure the impunity of the entity and its Nazi leaders from punishment and accountability. So that's what Palestinian resistance has said in regards to Aaron Bushnell. So what do I say? Don't stop speaking out. And for people who say, well, this is way over there. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. Our police get trained by the IDF and our ID in the IDF actually uses those tactics on the Palestinian people. Our federal dollars go over to Israel to do what they're doing to the Palestinian people. And when they do it to them, they're going to do it to us. On top of all this, the Palestinian people and what they're going through, is just a microcosm of the crimes that Israel is doing internationally. There is a link between what is going on in Congo to Israel as well. So that also has a link there as well. So we need to see that it is not just some foreign people on a faraway land that is being affected that has no bearing on us. It has a huge bearing on us. It has a bearing on us for how we fare here at home. As somebody who is for reparations, for those of us who are descendants of enslaved people in this country, the money that could go to us having reparations is actually going to Israel and Ukraine. And make no mistake about it, if you are Jewish, the United States government doesn't care about you. Why? Because they are sending money to Nazis in Ukraine. If they actually cared about you, they would not be doing that. The United States could care less. You are a means to an end. That's it. That's all. They will put your bodies on the line to do illegal occupation. They will conscript you for military service so that you fight their wars for them so that they can sip champagne on their yachts while you give your life for liquefied natural gas and for oil off the coast. That's what it's about. Ultimately, it is all about resources. It is all about land. They do not care about you. You are victims just like the Palestinians are. And those of you who are within our nation's military, they will do the same to you because you are nothing but cannon fodder to them. This is what's important. And Aaron Bushnell realized this. This is why he said he will no longer be complicit in a genocide against the people. And if it's not the Palestinians, then it would be another people. It would be the Ethiopians. It would be the Yemenis. It would be the Congolese. It would be the Sudanese. It would be the Haitians. It would be some other group that is being vilified day in and day out in our media. Because they they dare to defend themselves against illegal occupation and settler colonialism. What can we do? 
do what you can in speaking out. Share the facts of what has been happening for over 75 years. Educate yourselves on what is going on and how it happened. I recommend to listen to journalists who are keen on the issues. You have Aaron Mate. You have his father, Dr. Gabor Mate. You have Max Blumenthal. You have people like Dan Cohen. You have journalists like Abby Martin. And in fact, Abby Martin has a documentary out about Gaza fighting for freedom. It is free online. You can go ahead, Google it, look it up, watch it with some friends. There are books that are written. You can look up to people like Miko Pellet, Norm Finkelstein, people like that, who have written articles and have came on and talked exhaustively about what's really going on there. Do not let yourself be swayed by the narrative of the West. Do not be, do not allow yourself to be swayed by the narrative of imperialists who wish to just extract resources from the land and from the people and then subjugate them under harsh conditions just so that the corporate masters could have another Bugatti. That's what's important. I'm not encouraging the same actions as Aaron Bushnell to that extreme. What I'm saying is understand what he understood and use and live your life. Live your life to help people who are marginalized and who are subjugated under these harsh conditions. Use your life to live as long as you can to fight for liberation of all peoples. Not just the Palestinians, but also to all people within the global south, to people here who are living in an imperial core, to people who are living abroad. Because nobody should have to live under these conditions at all. Join mutual aid groups. Join protests that are on the ground to raise awareness. If you haven't, purchase a kafia. Make sure it's a kafia that's straight from Palestine. Make sure so that the money goes straight to the Palestinians so that they can continue to fight for their liberation. Join other voices like Jewish Voices for Peace. Join them as well. I had on my dear Jewish sister, Gaijin girl. She's speaking out. Join voices like Medea Benjamin, Lee Camp, Eleanor Goldfield, Katie Halper. These are Jewish voices that are also speaking out as well. Many Hasidic Jews that are constantly speaking out against the illegal occupation. They get it too. They see. Do not follow the narrative. Side with the people who are oppressed. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah.
forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.